Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Virtual Perez Art Museum, Miami. My name is Marie Vickles, and I'm the Director of Education, and thank you for joining us for our Local Views at PAM program with artist Mark Florador. Our Virtual Local Views program is presented with the generous support of the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation and features Miami-based artists sharing their practice and discussing works of art from PAM's exhibition programs that connect in various ways to their own work. As a 21st century museum dedicated to representing the people and communities of South Florida, the Perez Art Museum Miami strives to be a leader in the presentation, study, interpretation, and care of international and modern contemporary art, while representing and cherishing the unique diversity of Miami-Dade. Through our exhibitions and programs, we aim to encourage everyone to see art as an incentive for genuine human interaction. Tonight, I'm so happy to introduce Mark Florador, a Miami-based artist making work that captures the nostalgic moments of family, home, and more through his richly textured and layered works. Before I introduce Mark, I would like to acknowledge and thank the incredible team of people that work so very hard to make these programs come together online. Thank yous go out to Anita Brand, Associate Director of Adult Programs and Audience Engagement, and our world-class audiovisual team, Denise Faxis and Andrew Bird. We could not do this without you. Thank you. Let's get started. Mark Florador is a Haitian American artist born and raised in Miami, Florida. He graduated from the Maryland Institute College of Art with a BFA in painting. In his artistic practice, Mark explores his own personal history, background, and familial experiences. These topics are explored through a variety of mediums such as painting, quilting, and collage. Mark has completed artist residencies that include the Vermont Studio Center and the Oxbow Resi Artist Residency in Michigan. He is currently participating in the ULIT Artist Residency Program here in Miami, Florida. Mark has exhibited his works in various exhibitions including Noir Noir at Prism Art Fair, Idiom and Taxonomies at Ulai Arts in Miami, Florida, and Local Global at the Little Haiti Cultural Complex Gallery. As you watch along this evening on Facebook or YouTube Live, please post questions for Mark in the comments section. We will try to answer as many as possible in the Q&A portion of this evening's presentation. And remember, if you value this and other programs presented by the museum, please consider supporting us by going to pam.org backslash donate. So without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Mark Florador. Hello. Um, thank you so much for the introduction, Marie. Um, thank you so much for Pam for inviting me to talk about my work. So my name is Mark Florador. I'm an artist based in Miami, Florida. Most of my work tends to be about my relationship with my family and just recreating memories and important memories that are important to me. So I'm about to get started with showing my work right now. So. To start off, here are some pieces I wanted to start with, which are portraits of myself and my mom. I have a background in painting and I made these in 2019 to try to reintroduce myself into painting. So before this, I was working with mostly textile based works and while I was in Vermont Studio Center in 2019, I was starting off with the idea of the use of hands and how hands can be used for protection. And within this piece to the left, which is a self-portrait of myself, titled of a portrait of Mac, which is my nickname. One of my nicknames, it's uh, just having a figure have their hand over my head in a sort of prayer. And to the right is a portrait of my mom. Which within my work, as you'll see in the rest of the pieces, there are many, I have a lot of pieces of my mom, which stems from me loving my mom, but also she is 
more open to be used for art or like, yeah, to be used for art. So that's my mom's name, Portrait of Sana. With, in my pieces, I have a large practice of pattern making and just to better understand my work, I spend lots of times creating patterns of different objects or candies or foods that remind me of home. And to the pattern to the left, there's it's a pattern of uh, strawberry candies, which are pack candies I loved as a kid, and mango leaves. And to the right is a pattern of hibiscus flowers and also mango leaves. And hibiscus flowers are the national flower of, of Haiti. And my family or people in my family really like flower, hibiscus flowers. So, yeah. And within the next couple of pieces, you'll see these pattern kind of scattered throughout my pieces. To start off with my quilts, I have a practice of quilt making. And this is a piece kind of titled Saturday Massage, Louis Masquitil. And oh, Saturday Massage, Channel 45 Time in Louis Masquitil. Louis Masquitil is black castor oil. And within this piece, which a piece, which is a piece that has inspired many pieces, it's a piece that I was really trying to create my parents' bedroom and create this environment within their bedroom and showing just different things that would happen in the space. In this piece, the perspective is me walking into the bedroom and them looking at me. And the environment is my dad giving my mom a back massage and the TV is on, the radio is loud, my mom's handle on the floor, and also experimenting with the patterns in the background and just the relationships between colors to better get across to my point. And I feel like this piece was very successful at creating this environment and the mood of this environment. This is another piece that's another section of my household. This piece was the bedroom and this piece is the living room. And the towel of this piece is Mummy's November's Babies, Momo and Princess. It's my oldest brother and my little sister. The, this piece is me making a portrait of both my siblings, but using the environment to talk about their characteristics that I can remember. So to the top right, again, which is strawberry, pad strawberry candies, my little sister loved also, and the Miami Dolphins logo to the left because my brother played football in Miami for his high school. And just a lot of different things that remind me about these two people. This piece was a very challenging piece, but I'm very happy for where it's at. Another piece that I made, of, oh, I forgot to mention that before at this point, I was making paintings in the beginning of 2020, but towards everything with quarantine, I started working with quilt making and digital work. So it was because it was a lot easier for moving, working from home, because I have my nephew and nieces in the home and just trying not to use paint that much because the kids like to touch the paint. So that's why it was a switch from painting to mostly textile work within these pieces that I showed. This piece is a piece of my mom and her on the phone, getting tea on the phone, but also have showing her in her relaxed space coming from work and using the tea kettle to symbolize, to show symbolism of healing and the healing I want to happen for my mom in any way that's best for her. This piece is titled Adventures in Mako number one. And it's a part of a series of 
pieces that are that show my memories of growing up in Miami and just recreating those specific memories. So this piece, it's me waking up for school and my dad praying for me before going on the school bus. And in the, in the section, it says, please protect Mako. And this was originally, this originally stemmed from a poem. And then it, I tried to create a children's book out of it. And then I turned it into quilts. So in a lot of my pieces, they start off from one point and sometimes end up on something I never expected it to turn into. And this piece is Adventures of Marco number two, which is me coming home from school and at my grandma's house and just creating this environment based off of my memories at my grandma's house and the food she would give me from coming to school and how her house, my grandma's, which is also my aunt's house, had a basketball hoop and how I play with my cousins and the patterns in the background are sort of Capri Suns or juice pouches patterns and also hot Cheeto chips, which just remind me of my childhood. This is my, I'm just showing where the pieces went to. So this was in Prison Mart Fair last year. And it's currently up in my solo show at Art and Cultural Center going up right now. This is a piece that I've completed at the end of 2020. It's Poppy Iron My Clothes, Poppy Let's Go to Church, Poppy Parfait Moi, which is Don't Embarrass Me. This piece started from a poem about me just reminiscing of my relationship with my mom and just so when she wants something, she calls me Poppy. And when I started this piece as a digital artwork and to a quilt, then I turned it, then I started thinking about the relationship between my mom and which, and her sisters, which I think are her best friends and just their relationship. And in the background, there are also mango leaves patterns that I showed previously and collage mylar and photos, which I can't really see through this photograph, but it's there. This piece is all of us. I made this piece at the same time as this piece. It's the largest quilts that I And it's um, a piece where I, so when I create work, I look at a lot of family photos and do a lot of inner research and looking, finding for old photos. And I noticed that I couldn't find a photo with all my siblings together as, as children. So I decided to make one. I found different photos of my siblings as kids and created it into one quilt. Titled All of Us and just this piece is just my way of showing that I love my siblings and my connections with them. And you can see me, I'm at the bottom right holding a sort of vase with fake plants and fruits. Here are some examples of how the pieces start off as collages and then turn into quilts. These are, this is just, I'm just showing my pieces in Commissioner for postcards. Shout out to Commissioner for this wonderful opportunity. And here are, I'm going to show some screen prints because I also have a practice of printmaking. This is a mono screen print that I like to show of my mom getting ready for church. And in this piece, she's waiting for a ride. And I, it's a bottom screen print on silk that's mounted to 
that's mounted on paper and then mounts in the good on a wood paddle. And I feel like the medium was really good at showing how I wanted my mom to be viewed as in this piece and patiently and impatiently waiting for a ride. And in the background, you can also see my patterns, which I've created. And it also melds the digital and physical, my digital and physical practice together well, well, that you, at to a point where I forget that I have done certain things in the background because it melds so well together with the medium. This piece inspired some pieces I made last year which are first Sunday are pieces that I wanted to show my mom's different outfits for church. So there are 10 mono screen prints of the same image, but different variations of her outfits for church, which are really important to her. Here are some more screen prints that I've been experimenting with. And um, this is papaya. Papaya is my mom's favorite fruit. And I wanted to just depict her in, in a safe environment for her. And this piece is currently up at IS Projects for my solo show. This is a piece of my brother and my, my oldest brother and my little sister. Within my practice, I do a lot of self-research while making my work. So sometimes I know my idea right before making it, and sometimes my idea isn't completed until I complete the piece. And within this piece, I really was attracted to this image and really wanted to recreate it to show just the care within this moment and it seemed really I can't even I can't think of the word right now but really passionate or soft a soft moment that I wanted to recreate in an artwork this is my mango tree in my yard I well I have a real relationship with mangoes. Sometimes I really love them and sometimes I get really sick of them, at, mostly at the end of mango season. So this is a photograph I took of my mango tree in my parents' yard. And this sort of image inspired my series, which is behind of me that I'm currently working on. Um, so with this piece, Enveloped by the Sun, is a series of digital collages with ink and glitter and mango leaves that I've created. It's a series that I wanted to create about the cycle of mango season and in relationship to the cycle of life. I got this idea because I can think of certain memories of my life and then think of what season of mango, what mangoes, at what point it was in the mango season cycle and to kind of correlate life and the cycle of a mango tree. And also within this series, I really wanted it to look like when I walk outside and I feel the sun and the sun beaming on my skin, and it feels really nice. So that's where this series came from. There are currently, I'm currently working on this series and I'm really happy for where it's going so far. It's currently up in New York for a show, a virtual show at BAM curated by Larry Ose Mensa. And it features a, it features a number of Haitian artists and the show is titled A Return, Liberation as Power. Here is another piece of Enveloped by the Sun, which is, this is my oldest, my oldest sister. And this is 
a project which I've been working with French projects. They have a, a project called Public Color where they feature seven, they've, they have featured seven artists of Caribbean descent to do public artworks in downtown Miami. And I'm one of those seven. I have one mural up, which is titled Beach Day. For this mural to the right, it's a mural about my nephew and niece, Jason and Kaylee, going to the beach and them just enjoying themselves at the beach and their experience of joy within experiencing the beach environment. So this is up at 146 East Fagler Street. The next piece is being held, which is up at the Carol Glassman Donaldson Child Care Center. And for this mural, I wanted to depict my family members, or not, not even particularly my family members, but children being held and being protected in a safe environment, which were created by my patterns and just a sweet environment. So this is a part of the mural and this is the full mural created with patterns such as mango leaves and peppermints and hibiscus patterns. And it's currently up. These are my shows that are currently up or going up. This show is at IS Projects titled Just You and Me. And this show, Black Castor Oil, is at Art and Cultural Center. And it's a Ulai Arts collaboration for this solo show. And thank you for coming to this artist talk. And now I'm going to give it to Anita Brown for questions. Thank you so much, Mark. That was amazing. Like such a perfect snapshot of your practice and work. I'm sure it's, I'm sure there's much more, but thank you so much for sharing. Um, so now we're going to take some questions from the live audience. So I actually have two questions from Daniel Noel. Um, Mark, you said that a lot of your work is based around the idea of family and culture. Outside of your family members, is there anyone that you draw from, any artists in particular? Yeah, um, there are a lot of artists. That's my friend Daniel. He's inspired me. He has inspired me. And the artists that currently inspire me are Morel Doucette, Amani Lewis, Ambrose Murray, uh, Ambrose, and my partner, Destiny Belgrave. And there's a lot of artists which moving to Miami and being at Ulai has been uh, a great experience. And through Ula, I've been able to meet a lot of artists who have been very open to me and given me great advice. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead for Daniel's second question. Uh, how do your family members feel about being the primary subjects of your work? Yeah, I think, my mom is sometimes confused, but she really likes it. I think she likes, yeah, she mostly likes my textile based works and my siblings really like my work. They've been very supportive of my pieces. I mostly either work with people who are direct in contact with me. Um, yeah, thank you for the question. Thanks, thanks Daniel. Um, we're gonna really bring it full circle um, on the mom subject with this one. We have a question from my mom um, and she asked, mm -hmm. approximately how long does it take you to complete your very beautiful quilt? Uh, for example, Saturday massage. Um, Saturday massage took me about a month, but some of the, this, it depends on how many quilts I'm working on at the time. So sometimes I'm working on five different quilts, which take a really long time for me to give my focus to all of those quilts. I'd say my current quilts have taken me 
three to six months per quilt, I'd say. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. They're super detailed, so it looks like it. Um, let's see. We have a question from Santiago de Pre. Uh, you are still family oriented in a field which promotes autonomous individuals. Do you find yourself being a typical, atypical in your peer groups? Are you any more or less well received for being so family and culturally focused? Um, I think I've been well received. I think even for me, at some point, I even through my own thoughts about my work, I think should I sort of stop or take a break from my idea of putting my family out there and it's just whatever feels best for me. And in that moment, and I try to make the most honest pieces. So if at a point where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop making these work. And if it's best for the moment, then I will do that. But I haven't been pressured to change my work. Good. Um, I have a question actually. Could you tell us a bit more about like, what the process is for the murals you've worked on? Do you paint the whole thing yourself and how do you lay it out in advance or how do you plan what you're going to make the mural of? Um, for my, my murals, for the murals I recently did, it was mostly me digitally mapping out um, the artwork and going to the site and seeing how it would fit and then hiring painters to paint the mural. And I went some days to paint with them to just have the experience, but it was mostly them painting it and those artists working on the mural and asking me questions for them. Gotcha, awesome. Um, and then we have, let's say there's lots of, lots of fans that I have to shout out as well, Jennifer Clay, Naja Moon, um, Alexandra Antoine, just shouting you out in the comment section. Um, and then we'll, do, we'll take one last question, which is also from my mother, Barbara Graham. Um, what creative plans and using which mediums do you have for post COVID times? Um, what plans do I plan on working with or just advice to other people to work with? No. Oh, just what creative plans do you have for post COVID? Oh. Like what are your next projects? Yeah. Um, my next projects, I have two sh solo shows going up right now. Um, I'm preparing for another solo show in September in Chicago and just multiple projects in the, I'm not sure if I could talk about them or not, but just things in the works that I'm working on. Hopefully I want to do more public art projects and hopefully the opportunities come, the opportunity comes. Awesome. We will keep an eye out for those and I'm looking forward to those projects that you can't share. Um, let's see, we have one, last, I'll sneak in one last one since Jennifer Clay just wrote another question. Um, what are some suggestions for other artists that would help them radiate good vibes like you do? Um, <laughs> well, for me to get in a good vibe, listening to music helps me, um, surrounding yourself with positive people, I think, and people that are honest with you, I think is the best for positive vibes. Yeah. Yes. Solid advice. And Alexander Antoine just asked, where is the show in Chicago going to be? Gold Flinch Gallery. That's where the show is going to be. Gold Flinch Gallery. Awesome. Thank you. On that note, I will thank you so much for the good vibes and for sharing your practice with us. It was really beautiful. And I'm, I'm so glad we were able to share it here with our audience. So thank you so much, Mark, for your work. And I can't, we can't wait to follow more of it in the coming months and years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.